Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. I'm Courtney. And I'm Teddy, and in this video, we are going to pick out fragrances, or maybe a signature scent, for different types of occupations. So what we did was we amassed several different occupations, and then what we're going to do is based on what you think would be appropriate for that type of line of work, we then would have an appropriate fragrance to correspond with that. So we're each gonna offer up a pick so that you get a little versatility here, but super excited for this one. So you ready to get started? Go ahead, you lead okay. the way. First one is teacher. That's our first different occupation. So let's start there. So for a teacher, I chose Aqua de Parma Colonia because this one is classy and mature. And I think that someone you could look up to is gonna wear this fragrance role model status, which you want from a teacher and also you want your students to take you seriously and not be messing with you all day. If you wear a fragrance into the classroom that is roastable, that's all the kids are gonna talk about, right? So you want something classy, mature, Aqua de Parma, Colonia. Yes, this is also a fragrance that could be worn by a woman teacher, mm -hmm. a male teacher. Yep. Both of them could work. This is as timeless as it can be, it's a classic. And I think if you're trying to educate future minds, you wanna go for the classics. Maybe they're reading, I don't know, what's a classic piece of literature? Hemingway. Yeah, let's go with Hemingway. That's what's on the agenda today. For Someone class. wearing this is teaching Hemingway to our future children of the world. Yeah, just sit down, let's read some To Kill a Mockingbird <laughs> with some Aqua de Parma Colonia on. That sounds okay. right. Let's hear your pick now. All right, my pick is going to be Guillain Happy Rouge. So this is a, this is the EDP version, by the way. Just a citrus blast off the top. Mm. It is going to be mature, same elements that you're going for. I want something that's going to be bright, which that's how I would describe this fragrance. Off the top, very bright, mm -hmm. refreshing, kind of nice, like just smack on the cheek. Yeah, wake just, your kids up in the morning. Yes, that's how I, I want to be greeted in the morning. Also, it's mature. Mm. I think it creates a nice level of seniority over the class. You know, that's how I'm thinking about it. Another classy one. I think everything from Guerlain is kind of fitting that vibe. So that's really why I want to go here. Very similar type of approach that I was going for. Also, maybe a tad more masculine than Colonia. They're both very solid. Yes, so. love that one too. Yep. Yeah. Happy Rouge, Guillain. So next up here, we have an accountant. All right, so you think of accountant, you, you think of classic, clean, safe, and you know, you want something that's gonna be non-offensive when you're meeting with clients or in the office. Straight-laced, logical, good with numbers, you're not messing around, you want something classic and safe and mass appealing. Aqua de Joe. All right, so for my pick, similar type of approach. Okay. But maybe they didn't move off of it. Maybe they spelled it a long time ago. This is a more senior account. Maybe he's a partner at the firm. And for that I have Polo Green, Ralph Lauren. Very mature. I am trusting you to do my taxes if you're wearing this. <laughs> it has that kind of country club vibe to me. It does. Pine, tobacco, oak moss. It is going to be certainly changed since the original formulation because of new regulations with fragrances in the oak moss uh, note. But dense, it is kind of that classic American fragrance from like the 70s, late 70s and 80s. Like if you were a child of the 80s, you smell this everywhere, mm -hmm. all the time. And I just think a senior level accountant would maybe be wearing something like this. It worked a long time ago. Accountants are all about the numbers, being about the business. Yeah. Okay, what worked, process, let's stick to it. That's why I think Polo Green makes a lot of sense. Next, we have the category of bartender. So the approach I'm taking for this one is dark, mysterious, sexy nightlife type of vibe. And so I chose La Nuit de L'Homme Le Parfum. So this one, it has that anise in it. So anise, if I think of like a Zorro pour homme. Yeah. Fragrances that, I think you described it, it smells like how the Terminator looks. You're not getting that here. <laughs> this one's more mo a modern version of that, but I, I get what you're saying. This is a more spicy twist on the La Nuit de L'Homme DNA. And I actually, this was the first of all the La Nuit de L'Hommes that I purchased. Okay. I think they discontinued this one, but I like uh -huh. it. I like the other one as well, but this one smells very nice. Oh pepper off the top. That's why I liked this one, mm -hmm. was because it had this fruity fruity notes mixed with pepper, but then also has that kind of backbone that many will expect with the Lana Wee de Lome, like family of fragrances. Mm -hmm. I like this one. Yep. If you're a guy that's bartending, you might woo some of the ladies that you're serving. Um, 
and you know, get some good tips. Leather jacket, <laughs> slick back hair, probably has a pomade in. That's kind of what I get with this. All right, so now for my bartender. I have been to some hotels and I've been to like a lot of trop, and when you go to the tropical hotel with mm -hmm. the bar, <laughs> I feel like half of them smell like this and that is Lalabo's Santal 33. I think every hotel in Miami uses this fragrance. <laughs> yes, sandalwood, leather, papyrus, cedar. This is mostly woods to me. But why I also think that this is a good choice for bartenders, it can work in a variety of different environments. If you're in say a tropical environment like Miami, could work. Also, if you're like in New York and you're a bartender, I can see you working at a cool cocktail bar with this on. Very popular, very hyped. I think some people have become fatigued with this fragrance, but it's versatile, good mix of masculine with also a woman could totally wear this fragrance too. I've worn it. Yeah, it's hyped, but hyped for probably some good reasons. It is kind of out there though too. It is a little bit different, but that is why I think it would work for a setting like this. It gives me almost like speakeasy type vibes. I get that. It's, it's loud too though. So once you get a whiff of this in the air, I think this smells great in the air. And I will say it smells very good on the dry down on skin. Yes. And in hotels, Miami. Every hotel I've been in in Miami has smelled like that. This smells better in the air than it does off the skin though to me personally. Yeah. So you get a nice whiff of this scent trail. It's got a nice scent trail to it. I think that's probably what makes this fragrance a good choice for this category. Okay, the next category here is customer service. So I chose Versace Manu Fresh. The approach again for this one is very safe. You're not going to offend anyone. The last thing you want to do when you're working customer service is have something that people are going to hate, right? <laughs> you're kind of a bit of a people pleaser. You have to be. It's the line of work that you're in. I worked at Chick-fil-A, so I probably know that better than anyone. It's my pleasure 24-7. So that's the vibe I get with this one. Don't want to offend anybody, make anybody mad. They have to probably put up with so much BS on a day-to-day -day basis, but I totally agree with this. This is a very easy fragrance to wear. Of course, very masculine though too. So fresh, lemon, bergamot, mm -hmm. star fruit, but then it just dries down classic summer musky fragrance that's freshy, so. Yeah, but. but again, the reason I chose that one is because it is incredibly safe. I have never put that in front of anyone's nose that said that they hated it. So really just a great safe choice. So now for my pick for customer service, what's a fragrance that is going to be loved by so many. It's welcoming, it's inoffensive, it does maybe have some synthetic nature, and I could also say it might smell like a nice room spray. That's CK1. Introduced in 1994, it's a floral citrus. Musk, bergamot, lemon, green notes, lily of the valley, so just a mix of, get that citrus, turns into a musk as it dries down, but yeah. It smells like a Febreze to me. It does, it gives very room spray vibes, but I do think if you're working in an office, maybe you're sitting in a cubicle, this is it's, a nice fragrance. It's pleasant. Yeah. And that's, that's how I would describe CK1. It's synthetic, but it's just a pleasant, just never going to probably offend somebody. It's yeah. very just generic smelling. But probably why this smells generic is because this set the tone for probably what actually a lot of these fragrances would yes. come to be in that terms of this genre. That is an incredibly popular fragrance. This is what I would choose, CK1, Calvin Klein. Okay, our next category here is Lawyer. So I chose Clive Christian X. This one smells expensive because it is expensive. And if you're representing me in court, I think I trust you if you're wearing this one. Always hire a rich lawyer. That's what a <laughs> wise man once said. <laughs> I love this one too. I mean, you get what you pay for. It's a very expensive, but it smells amazing. Cedar, cinnamon, rhubarb, amber dry, the dry down is divine. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very nice. It's yeah. masculine too. Overall, I don't really have much else to say besides this is a wonderful fragrance. And again, I would trust a lawyer that's wearing this. Yeah, good fit. So now for my lawyer pick, because you pick Clive Christian, I think actually your picks is better, but this has got to be mentioned. Now, everyone's heard of Creed Aventus, but it reminds me of a lawyer. My one friend said that Creed Aventus smells like getting cut off at an intersection by a BMW, but you're not mad about it because they still smell good after they go by. <laughs> that could be the most accurate description I've ever heard of Creed Aventus. Honestly. I like Creed Aventus. It's not my favorite from Creed. Is it worth the hype? Mm, I think it's probably, it's so hyped that I don't know if I could say that, no. but it is still well done. Now this is a 2020 batch I'm spraying here. So heavier on the citrus, you get the pineapple, like more than it, you're getting more the birch here. Yeah. So fresh, zesty in a way, but also yeah. turns into this musky kind of woodsy dry down. That's just the Creed Aventus way. And I 
think for somebody that wants to have that kind of opulent smell, yeah. you could almost say in the last 10 years, Aventus has defined that level and genre when you're going for that type of feel. Yep. The more I smell this one, the more I like it. I think it's a good choice. Although I do agree, I think there are better fragrances from Creed that sometimes get overlooked because of the popularity of Aventus. Um, but yeah, very lawyer, very middle finger in the middle of an intersection. <laughs> smells good though. <laughs> Next category is graphic design. So when I think of someone that I would want doing my graphic design work, I think of a hipster, someone who is great with design, who is up on the latest trends, and you know, who doesn't want to be like everyone else, but kind of is like everyone else. Memoirs of a Trespasser. So this is an indie brand. Niche right. indie brand, imaginary authors. Mm -hmm. And I get what you're going for, because they have nice packaging. They, they tell a story. Yes. Which is what graphic design is all about. It's telling the story of a brand, and I think this house in particular does a really great job matching the fragrance to what the bottle looks like, the whole story, mm -hmm. the book kind of of the fragrance in general. So it's actually newer to our collection. I, I do like this one though. To me, this is very just amber, resinous, mm -hmm. mysterious, tastefully done. You're thinking about the entire the whole sure. package. So for my graphic designer choice, I have Nasamato Black Afghano. Why I wanted to pick this one, one was the packaging. I thought it's unique in terms of what it's going for. You have this oversized like wooden like, driftwood cap on this small dinky bottle, <laughs> which is very strange when you see that. But the other reason why, when you look at graphic design, yes, you talked about familiarity. You want to go for something that anybody could recognize. This has that, but it also, when you're going for, say, a graphic designer, I think you also look for what is distinctive and different. And this fragrance is that. Mm -hmm. Just its notes with this oud incense and cannabis, it's very resinous. You're either gonna like it or not like it, which you could say that's the, you know, sometimes a challenging thing if you're talking about it, but it gets your attention. Yeah. And that's one of the more important things you're talking about typography mm -hmm. and talking about this type of persona. That's, you have to be thinking about that. What is gonna grab attention? Yep. This one does. Mysterious, makes you want to investigate further. That's what I get when I smell this one. It's not my favorite fragrance. I think it's very hyped. Not really for me, mm -hmm. but I get it. But it is very unique. It's it's no comic sans, right? That's right, nicely played. All right, our last category here is a mechanic. So I'm sure some of you can guess before I even tell you Dior Fahrenheit. I feel like if you're a mechanic, you're working on cars, you might already smell kind of down and dirty. Why not add a little more to the mix? Dior Fahrenheit, I get this uh, gasoline, strong gasoline scent from this one. It smells like you're at the gas station. The other reason why I'd put this one, it almost smells because of the leather note too. Yes. You get a combination of what I would imagine like an automobile lover to just be into, mm -hmm. right? You get that yep. nice mix of leather, you get that violet leaf that's gonna give off that more gasoline smell. Mm -hmm. It's not my favorite fragrance, but it's iconic. Mm -hmm. This is an iconic fragrance. You could probably argue of all of them. Oh, you do have Colony over there, but, mm -hmm. and Polo Green. But these are, these are up there. We have some icons on the table, but. It just smells like a guy who knows how to fix things, knows how to change oil in your car. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's really what I get from it. Simple, mm -hmm. leather jacket kind of vibe to it, yeah. you know, not afraid to get down and dirty. Mm -hmm. I dig it. And now for my mechanic pick, I, I suppose you could say there's a similar reason why I'm going for it, but this is DS and Durga Burning Barbershop. Now you're Burning Barbershop, wait, why am I picking this? And it's because of what vibe comes from this fragrance when you smell it. Mm -hmm. Classic barbershop, but there is a note in here, a burnt oil note, that for some reason, it just feels like it's right. Yeah. You get the classic barbershop, just a masculine, just will hit you in the face. It also has some freshness to it with that lime and mint. But then you combine it with this burnt oil note, it's smoky, not to the sense of an like incense note, Yeah, different. It really does smell like burnt oil, which I'm not sure I would love if my car gave off that smell. I might be a little bit nervous, but I see why you chose it for a mechanic. Ultra masculine, mm -hmm. mysterious, pretty cool, different. I'm trying to think of who, who would be the right type of person that could pull this off in a day to day. Yeah, this could be worn by a variety of different people, but I think this is one of the occupations I could see this one working. Because you ask the question, burnt oil note, who's gonna really wear this? But yeah, I could see this working in that type of environment. I could not see that working in like an office setting. Mm -hmm. That one, it is offensive. Yeah, yeah, gasoline going up. Yeah. So my pick, the Essendurga Burning Barbershop. 
All right, guys, now that is our picks for fragrances for different occupations. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. There's definitely potential for a part two, so that'd be a great indicator for us. You could either go through all of these again, or you could just pick out some different occupations. Also, it could be fun to let us know what you do for work down in the comments, and let us know what your favorite fragrance is to wear to work. Yeah, do you have a signature scent that you wear to the office or wherever you go to work on a day-to-day -day basis? Love to see that as well. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. We'll see you all next time.